right, y'all, before we get started, all right, I want you to know that what you're about to watch is for everybody in South Africa, Africa, just people that are not like that are in a continent of Africa. I really feel that um, you guys are going to like this video because he, he talks about Julius, but then he basically says, just watch it, all right, because everything he's saying, it just watch it because he the guy he's speaking a lot of a lot of truth okay what's up with it y'all it's ejo e business welcome to the channel if this is your first time here thank you for coming i hope you enjoy my reaction all right y'all so what we are getting into right now is into another video on julius malema so i do not know who this who this guy is all right all i just saw is black men and women take a lesson from Julius Malema. So, um, I figure this is from somebody out here in the US, all right? So I figure it's somebody from out here and I guess he's just trying to take a lesson from Julius. So if he's from out here, then obviously more than likely a lot of people never heard of him out here, you know, but see what this is all right so black men and women take a lesson from julius malema so i'm guessing that i'm guessing that this person is out here i don't know let's go all right let's check this out i'm very curious all right so you know i like julius so let's see what he got to say all right let's see whatever let's check this out all right tell me how you guys like this all right and tell me if you feel, um, cause obviously how I said how a lot of people do not know about Julius over here is because, you know, it's South Africa. So a lot of times, like, we're not going to, like, know a lot about it. So you guys tell me how you guys feel about this and how do you feel, like, um, if Julius, like, should be known around the world or just let me know how you guys feel, all right? I just want to know that because I know I got a lot of... Uh, a lot of my subscribers and just people that watch this, they're down with EFF. All right. So anyways, let's get on to this. How you doing today, Brother Cliff? Oh, I'm doing a lot better today uh, <laughs> considering the things that are going on in, uh, in Black America and uh, I guess you could say Black cyberspace. But I wanted to talk today about Mr. Julius Malema. Okay. The third party parliamentary set up in South Africa where Mr. Malema uh, founded the EFF, which is the Economic Freedom Fighters, back in 2013 in South Africa. Wow. And his, his mindset and basically his party is fundamentally behind nationalizing this land uh, that was taken. Uh, by farmers, What's the white colonialists before uh, when they went into South Africa and established apartheid. Now that all of that is over, so to speak, and theoretically, and underscore the word theoretically, that the South African government is in black hands. But at any rate, what's, it, what's that term week, called again? Expropriation? Expropriation. Of if land. You basically take the land back, nationalize it, if you will, in my terms. Without compensation. And without compensation, compensation, yeah. And that's what he plans to do. Okay. Now, recently, I'm thinking last week, last Thursday or Friday, President... All right, this was... Uh, this was uh, August... This was August 27th, 2018. <clears throat> so... Trump was still in office back then. Um, I see that he's about to say Trump, so yeah. All right, anyways, let's go, all right. Trump tweeted and chimed in about the actions that Mr. Malema is right. taking and other African leaders uh, of several countries on the continent of Africa as well. What I want to get across to people, particularly black men in general, this black man sets the standard, sets the example. 
with right. the exception of maybe Minister Louis Farrakhan in this country, but he's 84 years old, Minister Farrakhan. Right. Mr. Malema responded to President Trump's ridiculous tweets. Mm. And basically, and I saw the video that uh, Phil of the Advice Show posted. Mr. Malema, quite frankly, from what I remember from the video, Commercial shit. Mm. Find a hotel or vacation rental at a great price with free cancellation. Book now on Kayak. Let's go. And all of the brothers need to see this. I'm not afraid of Trump, Great Britain, the UK, or any other person. We are moving ahead with the plans that we have. Right. And I'm paraphrasing. This is our country. Everybody else mind your own damn business. Mm. And he even added, I don't have time for nonsense. Wow. He's counted the cost. He even said if death is going to be part of it, we would not like to go there. Right. And, I, and as I'm sitting here listening to this man, I couldn't help but think like I sent my response to all of you. Check this out, you guys, all right? Trump, he was popular in the US but then he wasn't like for example like the the big states like you know uh, I'll just use this California and New York those states were like really against Trump you know it's kind of oh my gosh man just to how Trump was like a while ago, just like he was like a total different person in office. You know, it was just like I tell, you know, I say it was like he was somebody brand new. He didn't have any experience at all. Nothing. He didn't go to the, he wasn't in the military, for example. Um, he got called to go to, um, to war, I guess. Like, way way back in the day and he said no I think something I don't know basically he didn't have any connection to the government anyway all right why did I say this is there's just a lot about Trump man if you guys like knew about it you guys would probably be like what the hell man you know so I figured what he's talking about right now is how he's just talking about how blacks how us over here uh, he's just basically saying, I guess, how we should um, just see how Julius and the EFF, how they how they go about their stuff over there. Because as far as, you know, being like a strong group for um, for South African blacks, or just say for African um, Africans, um, I guess, like, he's basically trying to say, like, what I'm getting from this is, I guess, like, kind of in a way of, like, trying to say stick together. I don't know for sure I'm going to finish watching this. All right. Let's get back to this. All right. I'll talk when it's over. Let's go. All right. So once again, you guys got to let me know how you guys feel about this and yada yada. You and my particular type microcosm of my supporters who believe and follow me, you being one of them. Right. I could not think of one black man in America with any type of influence in any leadership role, whether it's coming from the black church, the Congressional Black Caucus, Black Lives Matter, you name it, with Malema's sense of conviction. I'm not afraid of Trump or anybody else. This right. is our country. We're doing what we're going to do. I don't know how many examples I could use right. to explain the weakness of black men that we have in this country. And then we have, we had a smorgasbord of black clergy go up a couple of weeks ago. Oh, yeah. To, Pastors. To kiss the hand of Donald Trump. Photo op. That's all that was. We've had a, I we remember that. On, we've, had a, we've had a historically black college president from my hometown of Atlanta, Morehouse. Uh, when they went up there a year, uh, about a year ago uh, to do what they needed to do for historically black college funding. Right. He saw that it was a game being played, and he made a statement when he got back to Atlanta. 
I thought we got played. Oh, he said that. And they removed him. Yes, I remember that. But the but the interesting thing is, not one of his colleagues, I didn't hear anything from another historically black college president. Right. And that's just one example. There are millions of them in this country. So when I'm listening to Julius Malema mm -hmm. and what he was putting down and the way he was saying it, how he's counted the cost, he even made a couple of statements referring to genocide that's being conducted over here in our own country. country and yeah. he also uh, made a statement with being prepared. I don't know if they I don't know if they were Jewish people or not. Another yeah, he said uh, been, but Israeli he, were training yeah, he was well the aware. white South African farmers. All right. All right, here, I'm going to tell you something. This is one thing, like, whenever I was watching stuff on Julius Malema, and I went on his Twitter page before, as far as, like, being a leader, like, for somebody, like, in a black culture like that over here, Julius would be somebody I really feel... Like, if we had somebody, like, with, uh, that's, like, peaceful about things, but has a strong voice, like, he's somebody that would be pretty big over here, like, to be completely honest with you, especially with the Black Lives Matter movement and all that. And that's something about Black Lives Matter is you can hear good things about it, and then you'll hear bad things. A lot of bad things you'll hear about it is because... People just be like, oh, Black Lives Matter, they do this, they do that, they do rioting, they do all the looting, and, you know, and they just try to blame Black Lives Matter. When anybody could say Black Lives Matter, you could, I could, I'm not part of it, you know. I go ahead, I say Black Lives Matter, I do, but if you want to say I'm part of the group, I'm not necessarily part of the group. There's other people that would yell Black Lives Matter, and it would say it, and they're not part of the group. But some of these people that do yell Black Lives Matter, they can cause a big fuck up. Like, they can just, like, really, like, 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 they can just go right. They can just do a lot of stuff where people end up looking at, like, see, that's the Black Lives Matter movement. Like, it's not like that. Anybody can just go ahead and say Black Lives Matter. It does not mean you're part of the movement, you know. So that's how, like, a lot of people, how they go. Ne I could go into that a lot, okay. I don't want to. But basically what I'm saying is somebody like I know it, like Julius Malema, how his demeanor, how he comes at things like like for him, like say, for example, if he was like that and he was like the head of a Black Lives Matter movement, just somebody like that. Like, it'll be good, you know, because just like off of the stuff that I, I have seen with Julius, you know, so um, go back to this. I'm done. Stop it. Let's watch it. All right, once again, you guys got to let me know how you guys feel about it. At the end, I could go on so much about all that, about Black Lives Matter. Okay, here we go. To become snipers. He's aware of that, and he basically right. said, in my terms, bring it. Bring it on. That's what we got to do. That's what we right. got to do, but we're moving ahead. And, and you know, else mind your business. I love that. And now, we don't have one black man in America who even comes close to this man. So, black men, particularly those of you in quote-unquote so-called positions of influence, take a fucking lesson from Julius Molina and grow some fucking balls. You know what, man? In this country is a big fear about death. And I think we as a people, if you if you already have your, your back against the wall where Basically, your people have been annihilated. You shouldn't even be worried about that. You should be worried about finding ways to secure your family, finding ways to secure, like, get together with other people who are facing the same problem We're and deal with it. With We're too crab in a barrel within our own Exactly. And we're too... The problems are too many, man. And I mean, we want to have a seat at their table ta yes. so much. On the other half of our brain. That's, that's the biggest we problem there. We will never that's the move biggest. forward and excel until a young group, and we all know what I'm about, right. with young black males of Empowerment for Tomorrow, that 14 and 19 year old age group, right. where we have to plant seeds of growth, maturity, and independence and do 
what we need to do to turn the black community around. In all fairness, do you think what they're trying to do in South Africa is fair? Just, I mean, coming from your perspective, we know what Julius Malema and Cyril Ramaphosa and the rest of them are saying. We're looking from the outside. Do you think it's fair as... Now the commercial. Here we go. To what they're trying to do because... Absolutely, I, because what was done to them has been unfair. Okay. America needs to get... Man, don't get me started on no, that. No, I mean... I mean, I, but yeah, you asked the question. Of course, I don't think it's unfair. Right. They're doing what they need to do because I damn guarantee you, if they try to negotiate their way, their way into it... Uh, let me see. How well has that gone for any... Uh, people yeah. of Negroid origin in the diaspora right. when they're trying to negotiate something with white Anglo-Saxons. It never works. It never, it never works. works. It? it never fucking works. So, oh, sorry about the cussing, y'all. But, um, you know, that just got me heated. But, you know, another thing is the redistribution of the land, as far as South Africa is saying, they're just not going to just take the land from everybody and not give white people land at all. They're going to have land, just uh, the same amount of land as black people will have it. They're just not going to have, what, 90, uh, 70 some percent or uh, however high ass number it's of the farmland. It's not going to be that. It's not going to be unbelievably disproportionate. Which, exactly. Like everything is because right. they took it by force. Force. They took it by force. So they're going to. Another thing we need to be aware of. Fox News, Trump, oh, yeah. these colonizer mindsets. They would love to fan the flames of, course. of black farmers in South Africa, black people held the savages, held bent on killing every white person, person as if that could even be done. Right. Malima is going to handle business and do what he needs to do. Right. And I trust. At a minimum, you won't have a bunch of shenanigans. You will not. Uh, but they're not going to bring war to that country. That I, country I, is. I think. I think the, the overall yeah. mindset, though, of this video is: look at the man's conviction, right, the man, and how he's not backing down from anybody. And I don't have time to get into it now. But once again, you see a. I'm white, and I say so. And right. You're, you're going to get Pompeo to look into something? Oh, yes. What? You know what? Trump, Pompeo, and America, you've got enough issues to handle right here at home with this knucklehead we had right. called the President of the United States, number 45. Man. Malima's right. Handle your business. Business, We're yeah. handling ours. Who the hell are you? We got this is our country. hundreds of people being shot in, in Chicago and other places, and nobody's saying there's anything a, about there's it. There's about 140 you People know, in the last two weeks, that right? Shot in the weekend, and not. And this is another thing. Haven't really heard one black leader of any. Oh yeah, that's another influence thing. or substance. And you won't hear any black leader saying anything uh, to help or shore up, right? The mindset of what Malima's doing in South Africa too. That's crazy. We're about as pathetic as it that gets. That is crazy, man. Yeah, that was my thing. You know, I'm but very inspired by what he was saying. In his mindset, and I'm thinking, we have no one in this. We have no black men in this country at all who would even come close to what Malula, in his mindset, is about on handling things for his people. Right, and you know what? I've heard Tariq Nasheed and uh, Cynthia G and some other people say it's good to control the narrative. Basically, we have to tell these stories because if we depend on news uh, stations like Fox News and whatever, we're never really going to get the full truth. Where we're never that, even going to hear half of come from yes. when we've done videos before that I've basically explained we don't even own our own voice. The Tom exactly. and Steve Harvey morning shows oh, Lord. are owned by white media, right. as, as far as I can tell. And even stalwart institutions like 
uh, the Johnson family who owned Ebony and Jet magazine, right. it's pretty much understood that Chase Manhattan Bank owns them. We literally have no black owned voice in mainstream, what I kind of coined mainstream black America. Right. Do you do you think with the Tom Joyner show and uh and the Steve Har- Harvey show, do you think that their stakeholders basically um, some of them are actually Democrats. Some of them are uh, liberal. But do you think they kind of play it safe so they don't want to ignite the conservatives? What do you think, Mr. I mean, Wilson? I really think that. That's basically... Uh, I think you're, that's that's one of a myriad of things right. that they do. You know, because at the end of the day, empowering our people, right. best damn believe is not even at the core of anything mm. with mm. what with what we're talking about now in our right. media and our news in print and or in visual because we are so hell bent on not wanting to upset the apple cart. So right. we'll be pacifist and play along just to get along. Because you're going to lose some sponsors. and Who gives a damn? Yeah, I'm as saying. Malima would say. Right. But, you know, <laughs> that's the mindset of these guys collecting checks. I'm going to lose sponsors. I'm going to lose my money. I'm going to, you know, and you, we see what happened to Roland Martin. And now, what is he doing now? I think he's on somebody's radio show. But, you know, it, it's just the uh, same thing. Pathetic. Black men get a grip and take a take a. Take a point from Julius Malema. Can't argue with that. Let me know how you guys feel about that. All right. <clears throat> let me know. All right. Let me know how you guys feel. Let me know how. Let me know about what you guys hear about, uh, like, blacks over here in America. Like, as far as, like, with their voice and all that, let me know what you guys feel, what you guys hear. Man, I need to know this right now, all right? So, this is all you guys right here, and let me know, all right? Because this is, um, this right here for a lot of people that are part of the EFF that watch my stuff, and a lot of people that are down with EFF, this video right here, what I would think is probably something that, something that you that you that would mean a lot to you because we have somebody a black american is basically saying how we need to learn about him because of things that he's done for the african people man go ahead like the video subscribe to the channel man it's up to you guys man all right we about it here